Okay, um, getting a C. A C, an A, an S, and an H. Cash. The thing which most people in life really, really fucking want. There are a number of ways to get it. Work hard. Sorry, I don't know why I've got these on. That microphone doesn't work. I just found that out. Anyway, yeah, many different ways to get cash. You can work hard, save, or you could be a fucking prick. Now, there are certain people in this world who profit off of the off of people in pain. Right now I'm going to talk about psychics. Now, there are a lot of people who say, well, you know, even if it's not real, what harm does it do? It provides closure. No. Fuck off. Psychics do not provide closure. They provide false hope. They take money, in many cases a lot of fucking money. And they take money from people who are grieving. And it's sick. It's sick and it's wrong. Um, To just take advantage of people's grief. And these people get comfort from thinking that they're talking to their relatives or their loved ones. And they're not. They're talking to a con artist. And if you don't see the harm in that, then sorry, you're an idiot. And, of course, there are some very high-profile cases of when this uh, so-called helpful practice, this benign little thing, doesn't really, well, turns out to be less than benign. For example, I think we all remember Sylvia Brown. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> Sean Hornbeck. Probably the most high, uh, the highest profile failure of old, uh, Sylvia's. Uh, Sean Hornbeck was reported missing from his Missouri home on October the 6th, 2002. His parents were desperate, so they went on Montel. Uh, and on that program, Sylvia Brown told, uh, Sean's parents... That their son was no longer with us. And that she had the impression his body was in a wooded area about 20 miles southwest of Richwoods. She said it would be near two large jagged boulders that seem out of place in the area. She also described the man as being very tall, having long, long, long black dreadlocks and being not black, more like Hispanic. As well as describing his vehicle as an older model blue sedan with fins. Her claims led to a refocusing of search efforts of numerous people calling in with tips regarding possible spottings of the rock formations Brown had mentioned. Well, turns out, Hornbeck weren't dead. In fact, he was found alive. And he had been inducted by a white man with short brown hair who drove a small white Toyota pickup. Now, come on. What part of that is benign? What part of that is harmless? What part of that is just a little bit of entertainment? It's disgusting. And I believe the parents of Sean Hornbeck were also built by another psychic, uh, James, James, James Von Prague. I think they told him, uh, he told them, sorry, that the body was in a boxcar or something like that. It's disgusting. And, of course, you've also got to keep in the back of your mind that these psychics must have hoped that this child was dead. Because people wouldn't remember the location of the body. 
They just remember the fact that the child was dead and they predicted he was dead. And to be honest, that would have been a fair assumption at the time. Because I think Sean had been missing for a while when these predictions were made. Uh, let's see. I've only got Sylvia's one up here. Yeah, he'd be missing for... Four months. So... I suppose it's a pretty fair assumption at that point that he is probably dead. But... I mean... you got to understand that these people must have been hoping that that child was dead. Just that they wouldn't be proven wrong. Because even if the body had been found somewhere completely different from where they said, they still would have pointed to the fact that the kid was dead and have said, we were right, or I was right, or whatever. And that's fucking disgraceful. And the, these people get away with it. People like John Edwards and Van Prague get away with it so easily when they're doing their shows for people. Because of fucking cold reading. And it's so easily done. People fall for it so easily. And they never stop to think about the misses. They always remember the fucking hits. Because chances are they're going to get a couple of hits. If you're asking 200 questions really fucking quickly, people are not going to have time to process the fact that you've missed information or you've got stuff wrong. They're only going to remember that you've got shit right, especially when that person keeps on reinforcing the thing they got right by repeating those bits that they got right. For example, was her name Char something. She always seems to stick with, I'm getting an A or an M. And what was it? It was a Fox report. Uh, James Randi was on there as well. Uh, James Randi was on there even. And um, the Fox report, the reporter was like, okay, she said A or an M and he said A. And then she went, A, N, 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 and he went, A, and, and, well, he sort of agreed with her, and she went, An, Anna, something like that, and she just kept repeating, An, and Anna, over again, over again, over again, especially when she got something wrong, to reinforce the fact in his mind that she'd got something right. <sighs> and, <sighs> how comes these ghosts, these spirits from beyond, can only start off a conversation with vague fucking initials, but then later on can give out messages and detailed information about family heirlooms and stupid shit like that. Why do they have to start off a fucking conversation being so fucking cryptic? Be like, Ooh, d d d I am a ghost. There's someone in the room there for me. I'm not going to tell you who. And I'm not going to tell you my name, but Jay, go with that, see what happens. And then when the person gets the information right, they start feed. Oh, sorry, it really pisses me off. Once the name is guessed, then all of a sudden the ghost can talk in complete sentences. Fucking scam artists. Laters.